today, part two. And this is the wiring harness video to get my 2020 Toyota Santa, which we put the hitch on shortly before. We're now gonna actually do the wire harness for it. So let's get into that. Okay guys, welcome back to Geek Smart. This is part two of the video on the uh, trailer. This is gonna be on the trailer wiring harness for my 2020 Toyota Sienna. Now we're gonna do this in a couple of things. I am actually doing this at the same time doing the hitch, so you may not see the hitch installed at some points, but those of you that watched part one, you understand that already. So, that said, uh, I'm gonna put links to the, the first part down here, um, but in this specific wiring harness video, I have the parts on the table. I'm gonna show you exactly what we're installing, but we're doing the four pin wiring harness, which is essentially just wires up to the vehicle's uh, rear tail light. However, it does have a power wire you have to run all the way to the front. Uh, this may be a little bit different than your specific vehicle. This is an all wheel drive version, so I do have the drivetrain on the, well, technically it's more passenger side-ish uh, to deal with. So you may have your cable uh, routing a little bit different. I'm actually also, doing a four pin to seven pin conversion harness um, adapter. I want the seven pole because on my trailer, I don't have brakes, but I do have it wired so that it actually pulls vehicle from the, or pulls power from the vehicle while driving. So I can actually operate a refrigerator in my trailer. So that said, I am also gonna, I'm actually gonna run two power lines uh, just so I don't overdo the amperage on it. Um, yes, I do have, I know the refrigerator that I'm running is only like 4.5 amps, but uh, each of these lines are going to have 10 amp brake or uh, 10 amp um, fuses on them. So rather than just split it and do it in one, I'm going to do it in two just to be safe. That's how I'm doing it. You can choose to do it the other way and just run one. I'm kind of overdoing it. I can always just bypass one and not use it. Um, so, but rather than run it twice from front to back of the vehicle, I'm running two the first time. Uh, one of the kits comes with the wire, the other wire I had to buy. So. Let's go over to the table, show you what I got. Okay, so here's what we got here. We got the various part numbers, and I'm gonna put all these parts in the links below. Some of these I got from eTrailer. Uh, actually, all this stuff came from eTrailer.com. Uh, this I got, just got at Lowe's, which is just a 50-foot spool of 12-gauge wire. I got that at Lowe's as well, just uh, some heat shrink butt connectors. And then this is one that I've actually had a while. Uh, it does come in this kit here, uh, because you will have to add a fuse, and I'll we'll open these up as well. Uh, but this is my secondary one for adding the the seven pin back here so the the power wire that i'm going to lead to this now this also obviously can do trailer brakes i'm not running the wires for trailer brakes but essentially you're going to do the same thing you could run you'll run that wire as you're running this 12 gauge wire we're going to run all the way to the front um so but if you're not doing this and you're still just doing the four pin this video is also going to pertain to you because this also has a 12 uh 12 gauge wire that you have to run all the way to the battery. So that said, uh, this is just the adapter plate that allows you to hang either one of these from the actual um, har the hitch itself and make it look pretty. So I do have that adapter and that's just a plate that basically just tightens on. Uh, the wiring harness, this is the actual wire four pin wiring harness that for my specific vehicle, comes with the dust cap comes with the actual harness. So this is the big power module, or the, I should say the converter module, right? The converter box. That's what actually requires 12, uh, 12 volt to it to power it. Uh, and then obviously it plugs into all your factory stuff that's in the, in the vehicle. Um, I bet they have a nice little sheet that shows what I'm talking about, right? Oh, of course, yeah. So you can see how it all breaks out here. But we do have a wire, and it comes with that 12 gauge wire that we're running all the way to the battery. Uh, it does come with an inline fuse. So you add a 10 amp fuse in here, um, max 10 amp, but that's what it's built for, so 10 amp. Does come with some zip ties, does come with a 10 amp fuse, comes with uh, a couple butt connectors and then your terminal for the actual battery itself. Um, I may actually grab some more zip ties because I'm gonna really fasten this guy down um, just to make it look as good as possible, essentially, make it look clean. Uh, so that is that part, this part, which is going to be uh, may pertain to some of you, may not pertain to all of you. 
but to go to a, and I actually chose to go the route where I have a seven pin and a four pin back there. So this plate that you mount allows you to have both showing from the back. You can also get one that actually has lights here that indicate whether or not it's working properly. I chose not to do that. I didn't want lights back there to be honest. Uh, but with that said, we have, it plugs into the four pin that you, um, that I'm adding with the main uh, harness. And then you have your ground terminal, which is the white wire here, the black terminal, which is gonna be for power. That's gonna be positive power. That's the one I'm running up to the battery. That's the only two that I'm gonna do. These two here, um, which I believe blue is trailer brakes and yellow is auxiliary lights or auxiliary power, um, which I'm also not gonna do. But they are there, uh, and if you ever if you need trailer brakes, things like that, you can run those as well. So uh, I'm actually not gonna. I'm probably gonna cut the butt connectors off and then just uh, seal it up so it doesn't get all, all corroded or anything. So that said, this is obviously the later item that we're gonna add. We're gonna start by running not only this 12 gauge wire, but along with this 12 gauge wire that I ran, I, I bought. So uh, yeah. That's essentially what I'm going to do now. Um, I'm going to actually start running it. I'm not going to run it all on camera. That's going to be the hardest part. And what I did, actually I'll show you on the vehicle. So I backed my van into the garage uh, and backed it up on my ramps to get an extra, whatever that is, eight inches or so, um, boosting it up so I can actually slide underneath a lot bit more. Most of the work is going to be back there with the hitch install anyway. So I chose the back, but I can always just take the ramps, put it on the front and raise the front up as well. Uh, but obviously it's going to raise up a good majority of the area all the way up to the front area. So at least I can get most of it ran. Uh, and I probably can even pop it through and just run it underneath for that. But now I can slide my body underneath the van. Vans are really low to the ground, so it makes it a little more troublesome. But I'm going to go ahead and start get, uh, routing the wire. And then I'll actually show you what I did after that. So we're going to start by taking some steps to get the vehicle prepared to actually run the wires. So rather than do it kind of step by step in terms of this wire goes here, so let's move that. This wire goes there, let's remove that. I'm going to kind of remove, we're going to remove both the tail lights. We're going to remove the inside trim section to route the cables through. Uh, we're just going to do as much as we can to just kind of get it prepared. And then we're going to start running the terminals to the battery. Um, so yeah, let's start with the tail light and then we'll move to the inside trim. All right, so I'm going to start by actually getting everything ready here. So I have the undercover already off because I did the hitch and I haven't put it back on. Um, so if you want to see how to take the, the bottom cover off the bottom of the, of the van, watch that video. Um, but we're going to take off the tail lights. So how you do that is with a 9mm socket. I'm going to go ahead and attach the drill to the thruster. We just take off these two 9mm two bolts quick and easy, right? Put those put away here. This is the little trickier part. Uh, maybe I'll get a little better angle on. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to actually bring the light straight out. Now, the problem with this is that there's not really a good place to hold, right? There's very limited to hold on here, very limited to hold on here, and you can't just grab onto those brackets where the screws came out of, but you kind of got to do all of the above. So I found that just kind of working your hands I, don't know, I did one already just to kind of try it. Uh, so kind of use skin, almost skin force to just kind of pull it back. No, don't, once you get so far out, once it pops out, stop because there are wires attached to it, right? And so there we are. And so what I'm going to do is on both these guys, I'm going to just clasp it. Should just pop right out, I would assume. There we go. There's just a, a clasp there, spring loaded, right? Same with the other one. All right. And now we can actually set that tail light off the side. So I'm going to do the other side real quick, and I'll be right back. So now that we have both of those removed, now we got this the trim piece here that we're going to actually run cables behind. So we're going to remove that. So if, as you can see here, there's these clips. But if you actually take the clip, it's actually kind of down like that. You take it and lift it up. Then you actually take a screwdriver, probably the easiest, but you can work it over out with your fingers too. That's how you get to... The actual fastener to it. So we're going to remove all those three of those real quick and I'll be right back. Okay so those screws are removed and then it looks like this looks like it pops right out. Could be wrong. Don't want to pull on it too much but 
It's gonna have to pop out, I would think. There it goes. All right. So yeah, it's just kind of held into the sides. It looks like. So I'm gonna pop all three of those out. It's a lot easier with one or with two hands. All right. So now it looks like there's just some basic clips that are kind of straight down in this. And so what I started doing, I just kind of lifted up on this corner, and then uh, you can kind of see the, the white clip here that actually goes in the hole. So I'm going to try to slowly work my way across. Yep, that's what it is. And that's it. So it looks like there's four fasteners, one towards the center, or two towards the center, two towards the outside. And now I have this guy completely open so that I can help fish stuff from A to B or whatever. The last items we're going to want access to is so we can actually fish wires between where the light is down here. Also, that module for the wiring harness is actually going to be housed behind this uh, plastic pillar here. So this is the cubby helper. If you have a, uh, one of the eight-seater eight vans, this is where the seat goes, right? So behind here, this lower trim kit, there's just some plastic connectors again. And so we can pop those out, and now we'll have access back here. We don't have to remove this per se. Um, we just want to have access back here real good, and then uh, find a, a spot to actually mount the item back in there. So, with that said, we should be good to go. Um, we're going to start by actually back in here if you kind of see where my hand goes there's actually some holes um these holes you can actually access them through here as well so i'm actually touching my fingers together right now so they're kind of kind of at an angle you may need um just a piece of wire i like to use uh, some insulated wire that's kind of pliable but holds its shape uh, so that way you can kind of work your way get it down in there right like that you can attach to that and then you can slowly pull it through. Um, so I'm going to be using this kind of the rest of the way, the rest of the time. Uh, pieces of wire like this. I don't like using, uh, in this case, like metal, like this is a, just copper wire, but there's no insulation on it. So it tends to scratch things more easily. Um, but sometimes it, it, it is handy. So uh, I'm going to have this on hand as well, just in case. But I'm going to use this only if I need to. This one is a little longer than this guy as well. So if you need to get a little bit further. But pieces of wire are always handy, so that's something that I would keep on hand. But we're going to start with fishing these wires. We're going get, get to start, get started on this. So in this case, I believe these are the ones right here, the red uh, section and the yellow section, that are, we're going to have to feed up to this side. So um, if I thought that I would need tape, I would use tape. I don't think I will because, to be honest, I'm just going to slowly feed in there anyway. And uh, to be honest, this uh, ground wire, I wonder if I should ground that behind there as well. Because it's going to be hard to grind, ground it in here. So I might take that up there with it, but of course it's going to go up there with it regardless. So we pull this guy up here, slowly but surely. Stuck him in the hole. Alright, so no matter what I do, there we are. We got the bunch out the first one, so like I said, worth its weight. So I got that guy going. This, the module here, which we're going to want to basically kind of find a spot to, to stick it to. Um, this is the power lead wire, so we're going to want to have access to this because where the power lead comes in, we're going to want to be able to attach that to it. So that said, uh, and then the green one, this guy here, is the one we're actually going to feed across to the right or the passenger rear turn signal, um, or brake light, or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to cut that thing off. So that should be long enough to get over there. So let me get answer this whole call, and I'll be right back. So now on this one, for I'm going to start by getting this uh, the right the passenger rear through there's a secondary hole down here and uh, I'm gonna I just fed my, my white wire 
from uh, one of the open goblets here up through the frame and then I kind of, you can just kind of see it back in there and I grabbed it out. Uh, it's just long enough to really do this. So, let's see, there we go. I have it popped out now. I don't want to lose it in there, right? So what I think I'm going to do is, just in case, I'm going to go ahead and wrap my, uh, one of my other ones around it too, just in case while I'm getting this on there. Nothing else get a little bit longer insulated wire, maybe. Um, probably should do some tape on this, but I'm going to give it a try without it. So I'm going to wrap it around again. Because like I said, I'm not really feeding it too hard through this. I'm just I'm going to pop it through there. This is more of a guide. So no, I didn't lose it. Good. And so I'm going to feed it in here. Slowly pull. If I feel any resistance, I'm going to stop. So there is some resistance right there. There we go. Alright, so we're partially the way. I think I'm just going to go ahead and pull all this through. So I have it out to an easy working area. Okay, so I, have, I think I have enough to get over there. So what I'm going to do now is take my wire again, and I'm going to feed it from another grommet to this grommet. Maybe I might be able to get it from this one from right here. I'm going to feed it across. There it is. There it is. All right, pop it out the hole. This is not a hard thing to do at all. I'm just slowly feeding basically in the channel here so I can hide the wires. I don't want them exposed if I can help it. So do the same thing again. I'm just going to wrap it on here. Okay. And I don't have to do anything crazy here because it's I don't really have any, there's nothing in this channel. It's open. Slowly feed it. There we go again. I'm gonna pull it all through again. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, can, I can move it out. Let me uh, get a little different camera angle here. Okay, so I'm gonna now feed this. I think I'm just gonna get over this last big grommet real quick. It's not very far from there, to be honest. Probably could actually almost push it without even doing that. Yeah, not hard. So I just kind of pushed it through. Maybe I can show you here real quick. So you can see these are the holes that I've been dealing with. So I just actually just kind of push the wire and get it in there, pull it out, right? And that's I'm just feeding it down this channel all the way down to where you can see where I have a bunch of it. That was the first one I came out from the back corner. And then I'm gonna eventually feed it up into here. So I'm gonna to have to get in here. So this one though, I can actually open the door. And I can actually see it back in here. So that's what I'm going to feed. I'm not going to actually probably even have to pop that one out. So now I have this here like we showed. And I'm going to try to fish this back into here. I think I'm going to get some more light. My other light died. Battery died on it. Get this light back in here. Alright, now I'm going to fish this wire. Yeah, there you are. Man, maybe I will. Oh, no, there we go. Okay. And from there, I can get it up to there. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it on to here again. slowly pull. Kind of a funky angle because it keeps it hooked here, but that's all right. I'll make it work. Oh man, right at the end it seems like it's caught. There's a, no, it's not that. Oh, 
All right, it's a little trickier here. Move that guy. That's a little easier. It's just because the two ends, two ends are kind of jammed in there a little bit. this time. So what we'll do bring this out. We'll actually attach to one of the ends like that and kind of let it come through that way. So Just a little tighter on this one, so um, I guess pulling it from one side so it kind of had more of a linear approach definitely works better. Get some slack pulled through it here. There we go. And now we just got to get it up to here. So again, we'll get the trusty wire ready, and we'll shoot for the same hole I'm out, which is this guy down here. Little kinked. All right, I see. There's a small little thing in the way down there. That's what I keep hitting. There we go. Show you what this looks like back here so you can see this is the upper hole i came out the bottom hole down here and so that's what i wanted my white wire to come down to so but you can see the white wire i don't know how well you can see it right there there we go it's coming straight through and then out this same hole so i'm basically going to be hidden all the way across up to there so to start with that all right let me pull that through crossed and attached and in so now we can actually uh, attach them to the tail lights get those put in and then we'll mount the module and go from there now these should be pretty straightforward so you have a pot a male end and a female end on each of these and obviously the two that are coming out of the car are male ends and they are two different types of clips so you really can't mess up right one is going to that male end is going to go to the female end of that one that male end is going to go to the female end of this one and now we can kind of tuck those back in there. And these are our new male ends that we're going to plug into the actual light itself. So if I actually grab the tail light, we're going to go ahead and plug these back in. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to pull this out and show you. But it's pretty simple, right? You just clip, clip, you get the two clips back in. I'm going to put these back in the hole so they're not behind the light technically and uh are in the way now we have to make sure we have we go straight back in from here but there is um a clip over here on the side you can see this guy stick it out right here that's going to actually it's actually going to clip into so we want to make sure we clip that as well so we stay kind of pushing in on this one and then pushing in on the back of the light here and then until she clicks and that's it that is literally it and now while we're here we can actually put on the two screws back here on the back. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and do that here in a second. But let's go over to the other side, do the other side. Okay, so I found my first mistake. If, before you put this, this left uh, tail light back in, uh, figure out how you're gonna do the wiring. If you're gonna do like me, do not put the left, uh, or the, I should say the driver rear tail light back in. Uh, you're gonna actually need that chase way to get the wires back down for the wiring down below. If, however, you're gonna run just the four pole out, and just open the tailgate, hang it out, and then shut the tailgate like a lot of people do, I guess, um, then go ahead and actually put your lights back in, and then once you're done here, you're just gonna flop it out anyway. But, unlike that, I am actually wiring it up so I don't ever have to do that. So, just so you're aware. This one's also pretty obvious um, because there's only one wire on this one, and it's only the, the bigger one. So, connect those in, and then we have our, our three and our four way. So, Grab the light, and we plug it back into here. That goes there, that goes there, so we have those there. And then we pop, poke that back through the hole. And then again, we're gonna push here, and then push straight back. And you can always just, you know, grab onto the light and see if it actually comes out over here at all. And then we can put the two fasteners in the back. So it's right about this point that we're gonna go ahead and go into run the power cable mode and in this case like i said i have two cables that i have to run one to power the module and i'm going to have a second one that's actually going to put the 12 volt to the trailer like i said before you could technically just do the one and then just clip off of it to go two different directions i've decided to run two um it's just a personal i just don't want to pop the breaker and then have no trailer lights and no power to the trailer i'd rather just be safe than sorry so that's how i'm doing it um, and I've decided I'm not running it under the van. I'm running it in the van. Um, since there's a, the power module anyway is going to be in the backside inside the van, I'm going to run it along the carpet all the way to the front. So, should be easier to run. Uh, getting through the firewall is going to be the hard part. But I'm going to have to do it anyway. Says I have another thing I have to power up there anyway. So, that said, let's, yeah, I guess let's get into this. What I'm going to actually do is I'm going to run the cable up front and then we're going to tuck it underneath here essentially all the way up front and that way it actually comes out right here where I need it to actually plug into this and then to get to the power motor down below I can feed it down exactly where I'm going to actually feed the four-way wire anyway. So yeah, if I actually have both of them sticking out right here, it's actually not a bad thing. It's going to actually save me time and money, uh, and time more than anything. And I don't have to zip tie it underneath the vehicle, which is always a huge bonus, less things hanging down. Um, so I'm going to actually just run the cable up there real quick, and then I'm gonna, we're going to start tucking it. So I've pulled almost all of it. Just I just pulled it up front. Um, and this is the end of the wire that came with the kit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get these together, um, and then... That way I can just pull all the slack up front and not have to worry about having too little slack up front. So, I'm going to use the connectors they gave me. Don't have to worry about doing uh, heat shrink connectors because, well, this is all inside stuff. So, uh, basically this to this. I need my thing. Hold on. Let me see. All right. Let's get the crimp on here. So, this is the cable that I have coming in. All right, now we are connected, and given the fact that I'm going to go about to there, I think, I'm going to put a little more slack up front. Okay, so you can see I basically have the slack all the way to this point, so I'm going to go ahead and start tucking this guy in, heading all the way to the front. And so that's what I'm going to work on now. And then we're, the last portion, we're going to work on getting these down there and then actually uh, mounting this. They do give you double-sided tape to mount this guy back in here. But that said, I'm going to go ahead and slowly kind of just, like I said, tuck it in all the way to the front. Uh, I'll probably show you some of that here in a second. So it hasn't taken me that long to get here, but I do have a little like spludger tool that I kind of use to push wires underneath there. There was a one spot back there that the plastic actually kind of dipped down. So Kind of had to lift it up and get it underneath there, but uh, up here should be pretty simple. Just feeding it underneath all this. So we're just going to take our time and get it up to the front, um, in front of the driver's seat. So right behind the driver's seat, right here, 
is the bane of my existence. That took a good five minutes to get the wire to pop in there. It is, it's not that tight, but it's tight enough where it just doesn't want to go through. But what I did is I took a smaller screwdriver, didn't push the wire with it, but I kind of brought it in here and then kind of popped it out. As you can, I don't know if you can see that, just popping it out a little bit, and I was able to scoop it underneath with my little tool. So I'm up here to the seats now. I'm gonna put the driver's seat back further now. Oh man, alive! All right. The next fun part is now that I'm up here, is getting it through the firewall, I guess. So here's the engine bay where we need to get to, and so I found my way through. Back behind the engine block, you can kind of see back there, there is a big rubber grommet. Oh boy, it's hard to see, isn't it? So back here, there is the main rubber grommet where the, the actual wiring harness goes in. And so you can see I actually have a wire poking through. There actually it was a hole right where I have it. Right, right there, sorry. There's already a hole there. And so I took this hard kind of a coat hanger material and uh, there you go, that guy there, and I poked her through the hole. Uh, it kind of took a little, it, it's, it was sealed rubber, so I kind of poked it through, but now, and I, when, as soon as it went through, I stopped, because I didn't want to damage anything in here in the car. So up in here, this is where we are, up behind the dash. Uh, you can see right there where my wire is coming through, right behind there. So there's the main wiring harness right there, and behind, let's see if I can do this, I'll still get in another video a little bit. It's kind of hard, sorry guys. So that's where the, huh, that's where the rubber grommet is right back in there. You can kind of see it. It's just really tight, so it's really hard to get video back in here. At least good video, right? Usable video. Let's see if I can get the focus better. There we go. So right back behind there, that's where she pops through. That's where that hole was, um, which, Popped through that last little bit, and then I it, it kind of came up and through stop here, but I didn't want to go through anything. Now, of course, there's guarding around all this stuff, but I didn't want to chance it. So, um, with that said, I have pathway through. Um, this is going to require some tape and some stepping to make sure I get it through there properly, and then, of course, making sure I route the cables from where they are here, right here up and over there to then go through the firewall and then back over to the battery so I'm nine tenths of the way through thankfully and I just got to get this pulled through properly so let me get some tape see what I can do so I have my wires attached to my lead um, I actually have two more wires I'm pulling for another product as well that's on another video but these two products are right primary so I'm gonna pull all four of them at the same time because I don't want to go through the <laughs> firewall too many times so I have it all taped on ready to go and stepped back so it doesn't like catch on one point so let me get up here and get ready if all goes well i might have to get my daughter or something over here but well that pulled through way easier than i anticipated <laughs> so the last little bit's just me pulling a little bit and then going in and make sure it's routing properly pulling a little bit going to make sure it's routing properly because i am by myself i have all four of my wires that i'm running and now I can actually undo all the tape real quick. I'm gonna get some zip ties up in there real quick, probably off camera, um, just to get them up out of the way. You don't want to zip tie these crazy tight. You just want to get them zip tied so they're not gonna go anywhere, but you're not restricting anything. And then I'm also gonna go up underneath the dash and zip tie that too. Um, and I can show you what that looks like after I get done. So let me zip tie everything, get it all cleaned up, and then we'll head back to the back part of the vehicle. Actually, I guess we'll terminate this maybe, yeah. So I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and hook these up without the fuses in them. That way I don't have any actually power going through them, and that was the big thing that kind of stopped me before, but it's best to just get this done so that way I'm ready to roll back there. So that said, what I'm gonna do is first I have the power coupler here that is going to go on um, the, or the fuse connector I should say and get the uh, right item attached to it there we go I like going making sure that it's right at the edge better there we go so 
On one side we have the ring that we're going to put on here. So like I said, I don't have fuses in it right now, but underneath most of these, this one's a 10, or a, I'm sorry, a 12 millimeter socket. But on the positive lead, there's always a accessory mount. And then I'll have my fuses that I'll attach in a little bit, but I'm pretty much ready to go up here. I really like that, but I don't see any way around this cap. I'd like to both go out that way, but I'd like to go out the back. I don't think that's possible either with how this is lined up. So it is what it is. Uh, that's what I'm going to go with. Um, and then we're going to go back to the back. We're not going to put any fuses in that until later, but we're all ready. Okay, so we're going to I'm gonna feed these down before I adhesively mount that. So i got the four-way here that's going to feed down into the down below. I also got my power wire that's going to go down there too. So I'm going to cut this to length, um, give it plenty of X, and I can always shorten it, obviously. Uh, uh, plenty, I think. All right, so we got these two here that are going to go down, down together, but I'm probably going to feed my wire again um, to give something to mount to wrap onto, but I'm going to tape this. Basically, I'm just going to tape this to this, right? That way, when I pull it, they pull together. Um, and then I'm going to feed my wire. So give me a minute to do that. Let me feed my wire real quick. Okay. After I have retaken out my tail light here, apologize for that, um, I am going to take my cables that I taped up and feed them up into where the tail light goes, and then we're going to feed it straight down and drop it out, basically is what it's going to do. Uh, so, like we did before, we're going to take our wire, and uh, in this case, we're going to feed it back up exactly where we had it before. So, maybe I should get a little better uh, camera angle for you. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'll get this, and then I'll, we'll get a better camera angle. Okay, so I did actually, I just fished down there and grabbed this and pulled it out here. So we're pulling this out the line. One other thing I will mention is that ground wire, I did pull that up here with the with the lights because it kind of was attached to that. I actually pulled that back down so it's actually going to be behind back here. Um, I'm going to mount that down where I'm actually going to mount the, the module. So that's one of those things I forgot about. Thankfully, I pulled that light back out. <laughs> that's it. Um, I'm going to fish a wire now. Um, where did my wire, my fishing wire go? Let's see if that's long enough. I may have to grab a longer one this time. I have a longer one, I think, right over there. And I'm going to fish a wire down there, and that way I can pull this down. Uh, but first, I guess I'm going to pull the excess up here so it's not hanging out down below here. Should be plenty of cable. They give us plenty of cable. And then I have plenty of power cable to that around. All right. So there we, there's all the excess there. Um, I'm gonna grab a longer wire. All right, now we're out, and I'm out. All right, so now I can grab this guy here. I'm just gonna route it on here like I've been doing, because I'm not really doing anything crazy hard, like I did up front. And just feed this guy down slowly but surely. Where are you at? A little tighter than I thought. Doesn't want to go down there. Let's see if that's better. It's that four pin, that big head on it. Kind of, kind of wedged there. So I may have to route that a little differently. See if I just do something like that. I don't really want to tape it if I don't have to. Hey, that worked. Simple.
Okay. Now we're fully routed. I can put the tail light back in. Uh, they are going to be bent over right here. Um, and then they're kind of a seal that kind of goes over that. So that's how it's going to lie. I'm going to go ahead and actually put the, the, head, the rear tail light back in then. And that's that. All right, so head back to the back. So we still have the ground and this is the self-tapping screw that we're going to use for the ground that came, that came with it. And then the adhesive pad here, I'm going to go ahead and put on the back side here. So we can find a good place. I think I'm going to temporarily just kind of place it in there, a couple spots here, see if, uh, if I can still close everything, you know, in the end. It looks like, yes. Yes, I can. So, with that said, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, first, I'm going to find a place to put this ground wire lead here. Uh, and I'm thinking just kind of maybe up in here. Just kind of up in here, right below where these wires are coming in. Um, it's going to be a little trickier, but I can pop this out. And I can actually go through there, put the ground lead in. You want to make sure that wherever you're going to put the ground lead that you can feel up behind it that there's no wires you're going to hit with it or something with, when you're tapping through. Uh, so let me grab that. So where I want to do it, I just put a 330 second bit and put a small pilot hole. That way I can make sure that I get that this thing doesn't dance around essentially on me when I actually go to put this in. So let me do this quick. And through the ground it. There we go. Ground to the frame. And I can feed the excess wires into the hole here. And then Yeah, it's a lot of fun dealing with all these wires. Let me tell you. More and more fun as we go. Alright, I think I'm going to stick that thing right up there. Now I can actually see it in from in here too to double to check on things. Alright. Put that back in there. Rubber seal. Now we can put the base back on uh, on down here. So this is going to be essentially just kind of put it back exactly the opposite of what we did. So pop it back down vertically, and then put these clips back in. Obviously, make sure that you put them back in the way that they were in before. Just <laughs> All right, I'll set to go. I will make mention that before I actually put that module back in, the power lead that goes to the module that I ran after the battery, actually, it didn't come out of this. The actual one that was crimped from the factory came out. So um, I replaced it with one of my heat shrink ones, put it on there, and then I heat shrinked it together so it has a good holding power. But yeah, they didn't crimp it very good from the factory, it looked like. So I didn't tug on it, it just kind of fell out. Weird. Something to bring up. Uh, so just I would maybe check on these. I didn't check these from the factory. The factory was. I didn't pull on it to make sure it was good. Maybe check that before you continue on. All right. So now we're, I grabbed uh, the bracket that we have from before, and I also grabbed the actual seven-pin harness here. And so what's going to happen here is we have a couple things going on here. We have one. We have this. Wires actually go through here. We have this to mount to this, right? So we just have four quick holes in the, or screws. They come in the package here. Then we have this to mount to this, uh, which should have came with this guy. And then this here then mounts to this. So actually, it's kind of like that. So what we have to do, uh, and I might actually have to come over here further uh, because of where this mounting pin is. 
uh, that or I could just bypass that mounting pin altogether. Or maybe I can actually get in between there. That yeah, might, might work. We'll have to play with it. Yeah, we'll have to play with that a little bit. Um, but essentially, I'm going to get this mounted up just with these. The, and it's pretty simple. These just go through the holes. You put your nuts and washers and stuff on. And then we'll get ready to mount this guy to this after we mount this to this. Because I want it all mounted because it's a lot easier to do before we, we get it up there. So I'm going to put that together real quick. And then we'll be right back. Okay, so I do have, I'll show you this real quick. So all four face screws mounted to the face plate. And then the two, I did mount those from the top because it's going to be basically right against the bumper. So the extra parts of the bolts are hanging down below. Tighten them up. They're all, they all have lock washers and stuff on them. So shouldn't be going anywhere anytime soon. You do have this guy here that mounts off to the side. So you can stick that there. Put the cover on it. There we go. Just like that. So that's what it's going to look like. Um... This is what's going to obviously be zip tied up above, but before then, we have to mount it. So, we have this guy here, which has, basically you slide it around everything and then it just tightens on up. Uh, we're going to get that mounted, and I'm thinking I'm going to have to come out a little bit just because of where that mounting hole is there. I'm going to probably come out like over here, which is what it is, um, but in the end, I want to come up. I want to get it around first and then I'll attach it. There we go. So it goes through the hole. There's a hole in this plate here. It goes through that hole and then feeds through this guy right here. It's just different than the ones I've done in the past. So it's kind of funky. It kind of goes in like this and then you bring it down and then you start tightening. So it's just, it's just different. So that'll work. That's fine. All right, now we're at least semi-tight so we can verify everything, make sure everything's in the right spot. Um, but I'm, I think I'm, I'm going to go ahead and crank it down because I don't see a, a, a way of getting around where this is. Yeah, uh, and then these wires will eventually come all the way over here. So um, these I can actually start bringing over now if I wanted to and zip tying them up along and then get everything wired up and then tucked up in there. So that's what I'm going to work on next. And uh, I may do that off camera just because it's going to be a little funky for a little bit. Then I'll show you before I cover it all up. All right, so we're going to go ahead and prep this guy for cutting for the hitch. Uh, and eventually also for the wiring harness probably. So to be honest, is essentially right down the center of this. You can see this is the center of the van. Uh, and so I'm going to mark center on this. They say, according to the drawings here, they want a 4 inch wide by 7 inch deep cut. I don't know if we really have to go that deep because mine does do this big thing on theirs. It doesn't look like it does it, which is kind of funky, but that's it. Um, I can cut, try to see if it fits up there, recut. You can do that as many times as you need to. So that's kind of where we're sitting. I'm going to go three and uh, a half inch wide because uh, my actual receiver is about three and a quarter. So I'm going to put about a quarter of an inch on each side, maybe go a little bit more. Um, so with that, so inch and a half will be three, inch and three quarter, or a little more. So if I go that wide, I'm just about inch and three quarter, just shy of. And so that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna go by that mark there and that mark there. Trace that up. For now, I'm gonna go basically to the, the inside part of this, this uh, drop. Um, I may have to, like I said, I may have to take some of this drop out, maybe all the way to here, because if I go by that 7 inch mark, it puts me basically back to the back side of this. So I'm going to start here and cut this section out, and then I can always extend it and, and gain more out of it. So I'm going to cut that, and I'm going to cut it with tin snips, um, and then I probably take a knife to just scour that and break it off. So that's what I'm going to do. 
I will say that it is cutting pretty easily. Now that I'm back there, I'm just going to scour a knife across. It's probably, like I said, it's probably not going to be my final cut anyway, but it's a starting point, then I can hold it up there and find out what I need to do, and then I can also find out what I need to do for the wiring harness. So that's my starting point. I want to hold it up there to see what it looks like first. So it worked perfectly actually put, doing this and then holding it up there because then I could actually sight exactly where the hitch comes in, which is basically going to be right here. So I got to just take that up to there and I believe I'll be good. And then for my wiring harness stuff, uh, I just have to take a little bit of a small corner out, not very much at all for that. But this is going to be fairly simple because all I got to do is taken up to that point. So I kind of did a couple times. I put it up here, remarked it, went back, put it up, remarked, went back, cut a little more. I think I'm where I need to be. Now I'm just zip tying the wires back up. I did uh, connect the power lead to the black wire for the power for the seven pin. Uh, I actually used my own uh, heat shrink one, so I did heat shrink that shut. I just have the ground yet to do, and I got a self tapper for that. I just gotta figure out where I wanna ground it to is the big thing. Uh, so that's where I'm at. Um, once I get the ground in, uh, then we're pretty much in the cover it up phase. So um, yeah, I, that's where we're at. So let me figure out where I wanna ground it. Put a couple more, maybe a couple more zip ties up there. Uh, I did connect the four pin. Uh, I'd like to have a seal on that, but I'm just going to zip tie that to this essentially to the, the actual uh, receiver. So other than that, we're about set to put the cover on. All right, let me see where we stand. We got everything here. I probably should cut that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I got all my cables, all my loose ones that are they're zip tied to the guy here. They're going to get covered with plastic anyway. Everything's here. My ground, um, I actually extended. I added another line. I actually brought it over here and went to the frame, or went through right here. Um, there just wasn't a really good spot to, that I could see that I really wanted to drill through. Um, everything else is ran, and I think my cover's cut pretty good. So I'm going to hopefully get the cover on next, and then we'll be done. Get my canister is fun. Hopefully, everything lines up good. I'm going to start the exact opposite how we went off by doing these guys, the, the four of those. That'll hold it up, at least for uh, good enough for me to get everything started, hopefully. Hopefully. Now these lips do go into the bumpers, so that's one thing that i got to make sure I do as I go up. So I got to cut a little more out for my wire. I, did, I didn't have the wire harness going through before, and that would do, so that's not a problem. All right, I've worked it a bit to cut a little more out for the wiring thing, and I've got these two now attached, so I should just be able to get these suckers back on where they go. All right. I think I've got everything where it's supposed to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get all the rest of the fasteners in. And then uh, should be done back here. So just two screws that are, once they go through, this one right here is one of them, it actually hits the uh, hitch itself, and so then it just kind of pushes things down. That one there, and then this one over here. This guy's not too bad, this guy, and it probably does the same thing. So what I may have to do is just 
shorten those screws or get shorter screws that still have coarse enough threads to thread into it. But I'm gonna do that at a later time. So I'm gonna con I'm gonna call it done. <laughs> I'm happy with it. It looks good. It looks really good. So now the only thing that I have to do. Uh, well, uh, I did put the muffler back on. So the rubber thing, I didn't show you that, but make sure you do that. And uh, yeah, this hitch is now completely on. Of course, you can see the wiring harness there. Um, but yeah, the hitch is on. Everything's back on. I'll show you it. So you can see the part that's exposed there by the uh, exhaust. Everything's good there. And then the this screw here is one that's poking down a little bit you can kind of see it you can also see it over here where this one's hitting just a little bit onto that but like I said that's not a huge deal and I'll fix that later and you won't see it actually from above but the hitch looks fantastic I'm glad I went to the three and a half because that way it's not hugely loose about it so I would recommend three I like I said I did more like three and three quarter I guess so I had about just short of a quarter of an inch on each side um, and then I yeah, I would much rather have this than having the cord dangle out here. But then again, I also wanted the 7-pin. So that was a requirement for me. It is sticking out a little more than I would like, I think. But I can also look into changing that down the road and kind of bring it back. Um, that's, that's not a big deal, but something to notice. Okay, I got it plugged into my trailer. I don't have it hooked up, but I have it plugged in. Vehicle's running. Lights are currently not on. We turn them on. Hey, got some running lights. Go, let's go check the running lights. Make sure they're all working. Boom, shaka laka. All right, we can also check the blinkers to make sure they're functioning properly as well. Um, that's left blinker. Make sure that sucker's blinking. Hey, she's doing what she's supposed to do. Go check the right blinker. And of course, I would love to check the brakes, but I'm not gonna be able to do that so much if it's darker out. <laughs> All right, moment of truth would be the seven pin part. So we know that the four pin probably all fully functions. Now we're gonna check to see if it actually has power. So this is where the DC power comes in. I have it pulled right off the van actually. And this is we're gonna tell if it actually is functioning. It is! Sweet! All right. We know we got power too. So, after uh, several hours of install, we are fully up and running, fully functional. And we know that the 12 volts working in the trailer even. So I'm gonna get my van put away here. But with that said, thanks for commenting. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for liking. Thanks for sharing this video. And we'll catch you back here on Geek Smart for more video reviews, or I should say video installs. I got lots coming. Thanks a lot, guys.